What is up guys? Welcome back to the Keep It Hoop YouTube channel. So in today's video, I wanted to go over the Bulls and their recent struggles. They got Vucevic at the trade deadline, which a lot of people thought was a good move, but they just haven't really been able to put it all together. They're three and six in the nine games since getting him. So I wanted to take some time today to go over some of the things they do well, but also taking a look at what they need to work on. Now, something I did notice um, and something that they have been doing really well has been using Vucevic as the screen guy, um, you know, whether it's pick and pop or pick and roll. But one thing they do a lot, you're going to see here, is they're going to clear out and then really just let the ball handler and Vucevic play a two-man game with nobody on the in the corner on that side, right? So if you let this run, you're going to see that Williams cuts through. So you're going to have three people on the other side, which allows Vucevic, all right? So again, three people on this side, I guess, here, which allows Zach Levine and... Vucevic to play a two-man game and what the cutting through does is it just gives them a lot more space and it's just up to them to read do they want to you know does Levine want to go to the rim with the ball does Vucevic want to roll does he want to pop it just lets their two best players read the defense and um, you know do what they're best at so here Miles Turner can't hedge very hard because Vucevic ends up rolling again he's able to do that because everyone is kind of cutting through or just on the weak side right so Turner can't really hedge and step up. Zach Levine is able to read that. It's a really nice three-point shot here. This next play, you're going to see how much they like to go to it. It ends up being a turnover. But again, you, you see them trying to go to it time and time again. This one, again, corner open. Sadoransky would have come and it would have been um, you know, a pick and roll or pick and pop with the corner being open. And the, the cool thing that they, they do with this, um, I guess, um, play is they're able to do it from both sides. So you know, the, the ball handler can come up or, um, you know, they can be going this way. You just have a lot of flexibility and you have guys like Levine and Sadoransky who can both handle the ball and be a passer, but can also spot up and shoot the three. So it gives them some more flexibility. And then again, you already have Vucevic who can both roll and pop out. So this time it's going to be Sadoransky running it again, but instead of actually using the screen, it's a really nice wrinkle here because he's able to just reject the screen and then they end up getting a really, really nice look at the basket from this, right? Comes up, marking and gets a nice layup. All right, so this time it's back to Levine. Another wrinkle here is now you're setting a screen for the screener and it just, you know, more movement, which is really good. Um, you know, they've, they've done this with other guys like Kais um, and even, you know, Thaddeus Young being the role guy, but it, it just makes a lot more sense with Vucevic, again, just because of his versatility and his skill. On this play here, now it's Colby White's turn to run it. Really good patience here. Instead of taking the shot right here, which you could have done, um, or rushing to pass it to Vucevic, who you could have probably get, gotten a, a pocket pass through to him, you know, lets the play develop a bit. Um, you know, the defender here has to stay on with Vucevic. Colby White reads that. Instead of forcing anything, just gets to the rim for a really nice fleet layup. All right, so this is a game against the Raptors. They go right back to this play um, in the first quarter. You see here, really nice read by Zach Levine. He's going to end up with a push dribble here to just buy him some time and space. He can come gather on two feet and then just ri rise up for the jump shot. You know, this is also really good because when you look at the screen that Vucevic sets, Gary Trent, who's a pretty good defender, right, has to go over because Zach Levine can shoot the three. Chris Boucher is not in the position to really hedge. Um, and he's a little late here, but... You see, Gary Trent has to follow. Zach Levine has two options here, right? He can go off with a shot like he did or dump it down to Vucevic. Um, and, and you just have so many options coming out of this because if you look at this, right, Malachi Flynn's in position to kind of help, but he's not really going to affect uh, Vucevic's shot. Then now you have here, OG has to guard two people in Sadoransky and Patrick Williams. So Levine has a lot of options here. He ends right, up making So now nice. you have a situation where it's a little bit of a delayed fast break transition offense. You can see Toronto really knows what they're trying to do, right? Because Gary Trent is cheating up here. They don't want to give up the pick and pop shot. OG is trying to force Sadoransky to his left and towards the help, which Aaron Baines is right here. Pascal has to try to guard right, right here because you have Daniel Tice cutting through. But he also can't really leave Markin and open because he can knock that down. And then you have Colby White in the corner who can also knock down the shot. So Sadoransky makes a really nice read here. And Vucevic just draws so much attention here, right? Because again, you have two two guys kind of trying to contain the ball away from Vucevic. And then Tice, really high IQ, makes a nice cut towards the basket. And then Sadoransky sees that um, and they get a, a wide open look at the rim from that. And, and you can see again, just again, really three guys trying to guard the ball, 
slash Vucevic, right? So you run a pick and roll or a variation of it, a wrinkle of it. Again, no guy in the corner at the beginning is a two man game. And then you have three guys on Toronto trying to guard two people here. So you, you try to come up with these situations where the defense has to guard, um, you know, or where, if you're an offense, you try to get a, you know, a, a three on two situation out of a pick and roll and stuff. And then you just get so many options. So you're going to see the same thing again. Corner is wide open, right? So you have a lot of space for the two-man game here. Vucevic is setting the screen. And then you have Sidoransky as the ball handler. Now, one thing I do want you guys to pay attention to on this play is Malachi Flynn here tries to jump the screen, gets a little greedy, and it ends up costing his team. Because what that does is right here, he tries to jump the screen. Sidoransky makes a really nice read, rejects the screen, and then goes to the basket. Which means Boucher has to stay here just for a split second, right? And... He's not able to get out onto Vucevic in time because of that. If Malachi Flynn doesn't try to jump the screen and he just stays with his man, there's a chance that Boucher, with his length and athleticism, can get out a little bit quicker. Um, but instead, because of that, Vucevic gets a wide open look. All right, so we saw what they've done pretty well on offense. So now we can look at what they don't do, well, which is defense. Ever since Vucevic came to Chicago, they've been pretty much bottom 10 in most of the defensive categories, defensive statistics. And it's no wonder, right, they they replaced Wendell Carter, who's a very solid defender individually and as a team defender, with Vucevic, who's not known as a good defender. This is a game against Minnesota, right, where, you know, they should have won. They gave up a lot of easy baskets. And you have a situation here on this play where Vucevic just looks really bad. And again, he's never been known as a great defender. But you also have guys like Zach Levine, Kobe White, Laurie Markin, who are all known as pretty bad defenders. And those are the guys playing the majority of your minutes. This is another example where Kobe White tries to go over the screen, but Lori Markinen offers zero help here. Jabs at him and doesn't actually stop the ball. If he's able to stop the ball, you can have a situation here where, you know, he can still get out to the shooter if he needs to. Maybe you can have one of these guys, right? Because I think they're switching here. Um, but then you can, you know, have someone rotate. But they're just, you know, part of its effort, part of its, you know, just defensive IQ. Um, but it's just not there, right? And you have here... Timberwolves player just gets gets to the rim, wide open look at the rim. Situation here, Patrick Williams, who is a rookie, but still one of their best defenders. He's guarding D'Angelo Russell, and it's going to be a pick and roll, right? But what happens is he ends up going under the screen for some reason, which is a mistake, number one, because D'Lo can shoot the three. But also, Daniel Tice offers no help, right? He should be up here hedging, and instead, he also goes backwards, and D'Angelo Russell gets a wide open shot. Now, there's been too many plays like this for Chicago. And like I said, they don't really have the personnel to be a good defensive team. But that being said, sometimes it's just effort, right? And I know there's miscommunication at times, especially when you bring in new people. But you look at plays like this and it's just unacceptable, right? And and it, it's the bad thing is how often it happens. And we saw how many points they gave up to Minnesota. And they're not a good enough offensive team, say like the Nets, where they can take plays off defensively or just have this many defensive mislapses, right? And and or mishaps. And as long as they don't fix this, they aren't going to win games consistently. And it's going to be again an awkward situation where they're going to be stuck not picking top four, but not making the playoffs, and they're just going to be stuck kind of in no man's land. Um, so if they want to, you know, if they're serious about making the playoffs, they have to start defending. And they have to do so soon because, you know, have about a month left in the season and it's, it's you know, really close race. So they still have a chance, but they have to start defending, um, you know, soon. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I thought that Chicago would be doing better, but they've struggled and just kind of wanted to point out why, um, but also point out what they've been doing well. Um I yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. We'll be back probably Tuesday or Wednesday with another video. Please remember to like, subscribe, share, and comment. Follow us on our social media pages as well. Links will be in the description below.